guys, I'm Greg. This is Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go check out and see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Goose Island. And guys, on the, the thing on the bottle here, it says Goose Island Beer Company in Baldwinsville, New York. And uh, Beer Advocate says it's uh, Chicago, Illinois. So I guess when uh, AB InBev bought them out, they moved it over, guys. So uh, I don't have any idea because I've not been able to get any of these up until here recently. About three, four months ago, they started bringing a couple of them in here. And I've been picking them up as I see the different ones come in. So, uh, I'm not sure if they've been in uh, New York for a long time. So, guys, any, any of the subs that know, give me some comments back on this and let me know. Oh, it's always been there. I know they moved it. I kind of feel they probably moved it over there once they got bought out. So, that usually means they changed a bunch of stuff. They're brewing it in different vats. They're using a different recipe. Or they're putting adjuncts in it. Uh, from what I've seen and read, it comes with good, good reviews. But, I mean... That could be short-lived once somebody like InBev buys somebody out and tries to save some money. So, guys, with that being said, this is an extra special Strong Bitter ESB ball uh, availability on this one. The food frame for this cuisine is bar barbecue, cheese, buttery, brie, gouda, Havarti, Swiss, your nutty cheeses, Asiago, Colby, Parmesan, and the meat is pork and game. Glassware is pint, Becker, the Stein, and mug, uh, oversized wine glass, whatever you want to pour it in, just pour it into some kind of glass. The uh, beer is not recommended for extended cellaring, guys. Uh, I have 5.60 ABV here. Uh, I don't see it listed on the bottle anywhere as far as ABV. Uh, the biggest plus on the bottle here is got uh, it says contains wheat and bottled on date, and it's got the bottled on date right underneath of it. So even though it's in bev, I got to give them a thumbs up on that for putting the date on the beer, so we know how old the beer is. Uh, I know they can afford to do it. I mean, they're the biggest beer company in or, or conglomerate in the world so they can put a date on anything they want to put a date on and I know the smaller breweries can do it too just sometimes it's, it's an expensive machine uh, to do that and uh, if you're going to be in the beer business I think it's a machine you need to have so it's like having a having a vat to, to, to brew your beer in or something to ferment it in so that's just part of being in the beer business as far as I'm concerned guys and that's the way I feel about it uh, I don't think there's anything else we need to discuss not recommended for extended cellaring so Let's not sell it any longer and get it in the glass. <clears throat> I'm actually surprised it's got a, a real cap top on it. Figured they would uh, change it out and put it in a twisty. I guess they want to stay hidden because it doesn't say InBev on it anywhere. It says uh, brewed by a question in the comments, call this number, and then gooseisland.com. Uh, Goose Island Beer Company. It don't say InBev anywhere. So they kind of like to have that hidden. They don't want you to know that, I guess. So uh, we know that. It looks pretty good in the glass. It's a very amber bronze color. Got some nice bubbles streaming up with that pour. We got not quite a finger of head. Uh, nice looking head. It's nice and creamy. Got a few big bubbles in there. Good looking beer. Very clear, guys. It's got a nose on it. I get a lot of toasted malt, caramel. A little toffee. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a malt pour. And I'm not getting a huge hot presence here. There is a hot presence here, but it's more of an earthy hot to me. I don't have the variety of hop that they use in this beer, guys. Smells very tasty. Let's give it a shot here. Cheers, everybody. Very pleasant. Uh, I'm giving toffee and caramel, roasted malt. It's a little on the thin side, but a lot of the harvest sales are. Very pleasant, very sessionable, very easy drinking. No, uh, no alcohol taste at all.
It doesn't have a big bold taste one way or the other to me. Very sessionable. And what I mean by that, it's very easy drinking, like I said, but there's no one flavor or, or, or one thing that stands out more than the other. It's, a, it's brewed to be a very easy session beer where you can drink more than one, two, three, whatever. Six, oh, six pack. And not have your <laughs> palate blowed out of your mouth by overhopped or, or too thick or too dark or whatever. People are, a lot of people are afraid of the dark beers. I mean, as soon as they see it, they just go, it's like they see a vampire or something. They go, oh, no, I can't drink that. No, 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 no. Don't be afraid of the dark. Guys, it smells pretty decent. I mean, it's got a real normal Harvestale nose with the caramel and the toffee and, and the earthy uh, hops here going on, guys. So we're going to let it warm up just a hair and let the other half taste it like I always do. And we'll be right back. We'll do the final chug on this one, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left here. This is a decent ale. I mean, it's not blowing my socks off or my hair back or anything, but it's okay uh, for an Ambev product. Uh, tastes pretty tasty. Final chug, guys. Very sessionable. Very easy drinking. A nice caramel toffee taste there with a earthy... I don't say spicy, but it's an earthy, not to the piney extent or anything like that, but it's an earthy, hoppy taste to me. So, not too bad. Guys, I'm going to go with a 7, a B plus. Uh, definitely worth picking up and trying, especially if you can get a good price on this. And, and being uh, InBev, they might you know, run some specials and stuff on this, because they can afford to do that kind of stuff, guys. So, if you can get it pretty cheap, it's probably a pretty tasty beer to have in the fridge all the time. So. Uh, with that being said, guys, uh, Ray Beer has 93 overall and 99 in the style. I think that's being very, very generous for this beer. And looking at the reviews, I'm not sure that it, something has not changed when MBAP bought it, like I said. I don't know if it's just as good now as it was then. So anybody that, that has been drinking this for a while, even since before uh, MBAP bought them out, let me know if you think it's different, tastes different, tastes better, tastes the same. Let's give me some comments back on that, guys. Uh, also, I want to mention, uh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned you yet before, but I'm going to try to start mentioning it. Uh, a friend of mine, Joe D, uh, beer reviewer, does a show on Google and YouTube every Tuesday night uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, and I've been joining them uh, over the last month or so, and uh, several other ones, Mark, uh, uh, from Video Bike Beer Reviews, I think it's uh, what his channel is. Uh, I, I, I used to watch him before I was even doing beer reviews, guys, so he was one of the mentors that... Uh, that helped me along to get me started in, in doing the beer reviews, guys. So, and AJ's there sometimes, and several other people show up. Uh, just depends on who's available and on what night. I see as many as two or three, and, then I, and as many as six or seven in there. So, And people can comment on it. If they're not joining the conversation, they can comment on what's going on and ask questions and stuff. So it's a pretty neat deal. So if you get a chance, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, get on Google Plus or YouTube and type in Joe D. J O E you know, the big D, and they should take you to his channel where you can uh, where you can uh, get in there, guys. So, with that being said, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, and come on back tomorrow. Let's look in the fridge. See you then.